So hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'll be discussing the use of supplements, especially the use of a popular supplement called creatine. Creatine might have a variety of health implications and it might have a variety of benefits towards our own fitness, mental health and also immunity. Creatine is a popular supplement which is used mostly by athletes in order to boost athletic performance and improve the muscle's ability to contract, especially under tension, for example, when lifting weights, whilst running, whilst jogging, etc. And it is mainly taken in the form of a supplement. Creatine is usually endogenously produced by our pancreas, by our kidneys and by our liver. However, most of the creatine stores as we age tend to decline. Creatine is mainly stored in our muscle groups and as we age, creatine decreases at around the rate of 8% per decade after the age of 30. Therefore, when we are young, our muscles can perform pretty well. However, as we age, we tend to start losing muscle mass and as we lose our muscle mass, the risk of certain diseases tends to increase. The main role of creatine in the body is that of basically generating ATP. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is basically an energy-based molecule which our muscle cells, our brain cells and other cells in our body use, for example also our immune system cells in order to provide energy in order for the cell to function. Creatine basically is there to regenerate that ATP. Various studies have shown that the use of creatine supplements tends to be beneficial. It tends to improve our muscle strength, it reduces the risk of sarcopenia in elderly patients and it tends to be beneficial for our shorter memory and intelligence. Creatine was also shown to be positively improving the memory function in a variety of subjects and it also has benefits at, for example, immunomodulation. For example, one study showed the effect of creatine supplementation on CD8 T-cells and how they might modulate the effect of the CD8 T-cell in anti-tumor and anti-cancer functionality. Creatine wasn't really much of a hype prior to the 90s. After the Olympics in Barcelona in the 1990s, creatine started to gain more popularity as creatine was being used as a performance enhancer by a variety of athletes which help them basically get good positions within the Olympics. The biggest problem with aging is the loss of muscle mass. Muscle mass and aging basically go hand in hand. As we age, we lose muscle mass via the process of sarcopenia. What is sarcopenia? Sarcopenia is the loss of lean muscle mass compared to our body weight and therefore as we age, we gain more fat and we lose more muscle. The loss of muscle was shown to be also a big problem in elderly patients. For example, patients who are bedridden in hospital have a greater risk of morbidity and mortality. Therefore, maintaining muscle mass is extremely important important, especially when it comes to elderly subjects. The advantage of creatine is that creatine helps not only to provide an energy boost, but also helps to maintain that muscle mass, especially when we age, and it has beneficial effects on our longevity. Creatine supplementation at around 3 grams per day or 5 grams per day had the greatest profound impact, especially on vegetarian. Whilst meat eaters, as they are getting their creatine from a variety of sources, might have a lower level or need for creatine supplementation. However, however, most of us, if we take a 70 kilogram male or female, can store around 120 grams to 140 grams of creatine within our muscles. And this storage tends to decrease as we age per decade. Interestingly, we tend to lose around 8% of our stores of phosphocreatine every decade that we age. Therefore, supplementation with creatine seems to be important in order to maintain our muscle mass and also to prevent a variety of conditions that result in morbidity and mortality. One advantage of creatine is that creatine is quite an easily available supplement. Creatine can be bought online from a variety of normal supplement stores and as we have seen it has a variety of potential benefits. Creatine however has been criticized because it was said that it might increase the risk of variety of cancers especially in men who take it for athletic performance. However this evidence is 
not based in reality as if we look at a variety of meta-analyses and studies that were carried out on supplementing with creatine most of the patients who have taken or the subjects who have taken creatine did not show significant increased risk from supplementing at a low or normal level of around 5 grams of creatine per day. Most supplements out there on the market may be contaminated with what we call HCAs or heterocyclic amines. The major cancerogenic effect which can be caused by supplements is basically exposure to these HCAs or heterocyclic amines which are mostly formed by the Miller reaction which basically forms these HCAs which cause for example lung cancer, colon cancer etc when there is a process of heating therefore the biggest sources of hcas we get in our exposure include mostly our diet smoking drinking alcohol like beer and wine and grilling meats the grilling of meats and smoking accompanied with alcohol consumption can increase the risk of certain cancers however a study which was done on the supplementation of creatine to a variety of patients over a four week period showed that the there weren't enough significant levels of HCAs in the serum and in the urine of these patients or subjects which were supplemented by giving them creatine for a period of around four weeks. Of course, confounding factors were taken into consideration such as the smoking status, whether they ate meat or not, whether they're vegetarians and whether they were exposed to other chemicals during the study. Most of the data out there again points to the fact that creatine is overall generally a safe supplement and if taken at a normal safe level for short periods of time during the year for a couple of years creatine seems to be safe in the form of a supplement and it might have more potential benefits then it has potential risks. I hope this video was interesting. I hope this video gave you some insight solving your questions with regards to creatine and cancer. And I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching this video and see you next time.